March is Women's History Month, and to celebrate, we're rolling out a special interview series hosted by me, Emily Curl, with some leading ladies in music. Join me for some real talk on real topics that affect women. Today, we are joined by the lovely and talented Sophia Carson, one of my favorite people to hang out with. Sophia, Aww. thank you so much for being here. Thank you for that intro and ditto. I'm so happy to be here. How are you? It's been a while since we last spoke, but I feel like you have been staying busy lately. Uh, luckily, yes, I have been. I'm so lucky to be able to keep working and creating, but you know, my family is um, healthy and working and we're all okay, so I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. You know, it's nice to be back. I'm glad to hear that with you. And like I mentioned, I have like my little vibey studio going on here in New York. No, so I love it. A little bit back to normal, which I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> now, this month is truly a month of celebration. Celebrating all the women that inspire us, that have shaped us, that have shaped who you are as a person. So I want to start by just taking it back. Who do you credit as someone in your life that has really made a huge impact on you and has shaped the woman that you've become today? Oh my gosh, no doubt, my mother in every single way, shape or form. She is the greatest heart I have ever known and just a force. Nothing is impossible for her and she leads with love. And she has shaped who I am today and every day I, I strive to learn from her and be a little bit more like her and I'm just so eternally grateful that I've had her example and her love every step of the way. What's a piece of advice that your mom has given you that's something that's been ingrained with you and you think will continue to be forever? So many, but I think there are two that really stick with me and this first one I think has become just so much more, has just taken on a whole new meaning. Since I was a little girl and especially when I started kind of stepping into this world of my dreams and things started happening in this business, she would always just text me and say, enjoy the ride. And I always thought that I knew what that meant. And now more than ever, her words have just become so important. She always says that life is lived in moments and all we have promised is not even today, it's right here, right now. So we have to enjoy the ride. And I really am trying to live my life that way with those words in mind. And I think the second thing that has also really defined who I am as a person is she's dedicated so much of her life to giving. And she's believed that it's really the most important decision that we can make. And kind of because of her example, um, I decided to do the same. You know, I'm now I'm a UNICEF ambassador and I, I try to do every, all that I can to give back, but it really is um, the most important thing that I, I believe that we can do. That's beautiful. And, you know, obviously, you know your mom, you're close to there. What about a woman that you've never met before that has really impacted your life? So many, so many. I mean, I would say Audrey has always had a huge impact on me. Um, and that was an example that I learned from my mom as well. Just not only her grace and how she has become such an icon in this business, but for the world, but how she dedicated her life to giving and to UNICEF. I've always looked up to her for that. But of my generation, I would say Malala is someone who I've always admired deeply and her devotion, her dedication to her belief, her wholehearted belief that education is our greatest weapon. And she has a quote that is something along the lines of like one teacher, one book, one pen, one child can change the world. And I mean, it's true, it has and it will continue to. So I would love to just meet her and sit with her one day. And she's lived through so much and yeah. has meant yeah. so much to so many young girls. So. Um, She's a big inspiration for me, definitely. Such a great answer. Thank now, you. I want to talk a little bit about music, too. What would you say is the most challenging part of being an artist during this time, but especially being a woman in the music industry? Being a woman in the industry, I think right now it's a really exciting time for women in the industry. And I'm part of a movement called We Do It Together. I mean, that's more film focused, but it's based on fighting for the equality and parity of, you know, women in film, mm. in front of the camera, mm. behind the camera, all of that. And, you know, I feel like in the beginning of my career, it was um, more difficult in terms of the, the content that I was being given or the songs that I was being sent. Um, were all stories I didn't want to tell. I think it just really very much objectified women. 
And luckily the world has changed so much. That's no longer the only narrative that people are expecting women to tell. We can tell so true. all the narratives. So it's changed so much and it's really exciting that people finally just, they kind of got it. And they're like, oh, she's not going to sing about that. And that's totally okay. Um, so that's really exciting. And, um, you know, women are at the forefront of, literally at the forefront of making history and of change right now, because I feel like we lead with our hearts first and foremost. And um, it's really exciting to kind of see what is coming and to be kind of a part of that, of that change in a small way. Thinking about that same idea, I want to talk about social media because I feel like that's something that's really impacted a lot of people during this time, especially with the constant consumption of, you know, news, but also just the constant comparison. For you, how does that impact you? Have you found you have a good balance with social media, what you ingest, what you put out and, you know, not comparing yourself to others or feeling like you're not enough just based on what you see online? Social media can be such a beautiful thing, but it can also be, you know, a source of a lot of, of pain for a lot of people because of that. Because there's this kind of uh, almost impossible standard, right, of beauty and perfection yeah. that lives in this world. And, and in terms of social media, I think I've come to a healthy balance because, you know, I'm not an influencer, I'm an artist, so it's different for me. Like, I don't, um, you know, I, I don't share so much of my personal life. I share some of it and most of it is like, what's going on in, in, in my music and my films and things that I'm excited to share about my fans. There's kind of like that healthy balance where we have this really beautiful and personal connection, but there is kind of like, you know, a separation, which I think is healthy and important. I think necessary too. Do you ever have to deal with criticism? You know, like when you're putting yourself out there, I know you said like you're sharing more of your work as an artist. Do you have to deal with trolls? And if so, like, how do you navigate that territory? How do you deal with the people on the internet who maybe, you know, aren't as open? I don't really read comments, which I think is a good thing. So I don't really kind of go through all the comments. I will say, and I don't know if this is just, I've just been very lucky with the community that I have in my in my Instagram and in my social media that I haven't really had much experience with that. Like it's, I feel quite a lot of positivity, which is really beautiful, which is really, really special. And I remember when I released, I think it was Songbird at the end of the year and I released Hold On To Me. I remember one of the heads of the studio called and they were like, we're so overwhelmed with your fan base and how beautiful and supportive they are. So I think we've just really cultivated a, I don't know, a really healthy and loving and supportive culture. Um, so I feel really lucky. On the days that you maybe do need a little extra boost, what badass female energy <laughs> do you channel when you need that? <laughs> you know, and I actually, this takes me back to um, my very, one of my first days on the set of Descendants. I remember I had never acted in a movie before in my whole entire life. And I was around like Kristen Chenoweth, like all these huge names, Kenny Ortega. And we were shooting the opening number and Evie had to strut down a table and like do something. And, and I'm also very clumsy. So I was like, oh my gosh, Sophia, don't fall. And I just remember always, whenever I've had these moments in my life where I've like need this boost, I always think of Beyonce strutting down a stage. Like there are few things more powerful in the world than watching Beyonce strut down a stage as if the world is hers. It's like she steps into armor when she's backstage. <laughs> And then the second the curtains open, it's like she's unstoppable. So I always think of that and go to that. And whenever I'm on stage, I try my best to channel that. But that <laughs> always just does it for me. That's <laughs> such a good one. Sometimes if I like need to like hide myself up to go work out or something, I'll just watch her Super Bowl performance and I'm oh there. My God. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, 2021, Sophia, what else can we expect from you this year? I have um, focused the last couple of months of, of 2021 on being in the studio every week and uh, writing music and working with incredible writers. And I also may or may not have music coming out very soon, which I'm really excited about. It's so exciting. So exciting. And um, I also have Revlon campaigns lined up, another uh, film project that I'll be producing and starring in um, for Netflix. Um, alongside Charles Melton, which I'm really excited to be shooting that this year. And um, so many exciting things that are coming up, another film project as well that I can't talk about, but um, just lucky to, to be able to do what I love every day. We love that, Sophia. We can't wait for all these projects. And thank you so much for being here. Happy Women's History Month. Thank and you. thank you all for watching. Make sure you stream all of Sophia Carson's music on iHeartRadio. And Sophia, we'll see you soon. Of course, I'll see you soon. Mwah. 
Thanks so much for watching our Women's History Month series on iHeartRadio. We hope you enjoyed it. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.